All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. CP the Franchise here. And I got a big announcement for you guys. We want to welcome BetUS as the official sportsbook sponsor of Knicks Fan TV. BetUS is the leading online sportsbook that offers a wide range of sports betting and casino games. It's reliable, it's secure, and they offer excellent customer service. They have a number of options to choose from between pregame betting, live betting, parlays, and prop bets. Now for the Knicks, there's a couple of options that you can bet on right now before the season starts. How about the in-season tournament odds? Right now, the Knicks are a plus 2,000 to win the in-season tournament. They're also a plus 800 to win the Atlantic Division. What do you think? Even though the Celtics got better, Philadelphia coming back into the pack, Knicks are at a plus 800. Can the Knicks win the East? Well, if you think so, put your money where your mouth is. The Knicks are currently at a plus 1,600 on BetUS's sportsbook to win the Eastern Conference. And lastly, can they take home the gold? The Knicks going into this season as a plus 5,000 to raise the Larry O'Brien trophy at the end of the season to be the champs, the world champs or the national champs, but the champs. What do you think? Use our promo code today to sign up and get a bonus match of 125%. It is a great deal. Shout out to BetUS. Once again, the official sportsbook sponsor of Knicks Fan TV. All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. We got a special edition of Knicks Fan TV. CP the Franchise here. And special guest. He's one of my favorite guests, man. Every time he comes through, man. A diehard Knicks fan. But one of the best in the business when it comes to sports media. You can catch him literally everywhere. Uh, first and foremost, the MMA Hour. He's also the host of the Ariel Hawani Basketball Show, courtesy of Showtime. You can catch him on The Zone Sports, BT Sports, Spotify. The Ringer, his own newsletter. This guy is everywhere. My guy Ariel Owan, he's back on the show for a Knicks training camp preview show. Ariel, how you feeling, man? Uh, I'm feeling great. What an intro. Thank you very much, my friend. It's great to be back. Uh, just like the Knicks are back in Charleston, back. South Carolina, baby. 90s yeah. vibes up in this. Yeah. I love it. So, no nonsense. Absolutely, man. No nonsense. They are back in Charleston. Where are you in terms of the, the optimism bar compared to last year? You know, they finished closing out two games away from the second round. Tough loss to the Heat. How are you feeling as this team goes into this uh, new season? Okay, so this is always a, a fun time. We're coming off of Media Day. Media Day is so fun, right? Yeah, Everyone's yeah. got their new haircut, their new like beard trim, yeah. fresh jerseys. First it's day of school vibes. Ah, oh, it's the best. Yeah. I, I I love Media Day content. I do my show on Monday, and you know historically what I love to do is I save it all for Monday night, and then I just sit there and consume it all and see what the different teams are posting. But obviously, in particular, I'm uh, very biased towards the Knicks. So if we would have talked after the Miami Heat series, I was I was pretty bummed because yeah, I, I felt tight. like that that was there. That was there for the taking. And I felt like we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, especially losing at home um, in game one. I really thought that uh, we were the better team. And obviously, you know, shout out to Miami. They made it to the finals. God bless. And how I was feeling at the end of the series was I think it's time to move on from Julius. I really mm. didn't like his body language. I didn't like his shot selection. Jalen Brunson was the best Nick on the floor. And certainly other people, especially in the elimination game, didn't really you know, hold their weight. It was really just Jalen and a bunch of other people who didn't show up. But there was something about Julius's vibe that was really, uh, was really bumming me out. And I thought that this was the, uh, the off season where mm. we finally divorce. Um, I've kind of softened on that stance. I like the fact that there haven't been any wholesale changes. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that there's not a ton of drama except for probably Evan Fournier. And we yeah. can get to him in a moment. Um, we lose, you know, a, a nice piece in Derrick Rose, a leader, so to speak. But I'm really excited about Dante <clears throat> DiVincenzo. Mm -hmm. uh, having a shooter like that to open things up. Haven't had a shooter like that in quite some time. Uh, you know, we, we've had the likes of uh, Sean Williams and uh, yeah. my main man, Optimus Prime Copeland, like guys who can you know hit that corner three. Yeah. Loved Copeland, by the way. Uh, but DiVincenzo, I think, is a is a is a huge upgrade from what we've had, um, especially over the last decade or so. So I like the fact that there isn't a lot of drama. I like the fact that there wasn't like a wholesale change. They didn't blow up the team. They're staying the course. Perhaps some big moves to come. 
I feel very good. I feel mm -hmm. like we're a top five team. I feel like there are other teams in the top five that have made wholesale changes. We'll see if those come to fruition in a good way or other teams a la Sixers who are dealing with a ton of drama as well. Who knows what Miami is? They lost some important pieces. Obviously, the Bucks got better. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that the Celtics probably got better, but there's some new pieces as well. So yeah. I feel good. I, I, I like the fact that we're staying pat. We're staying the course. We're trusting the process, pardon the pun. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting time because continuity is really the key theme that, especially Tibbs, he's really been preaching that. Coming in another year with this group, 99% of the roster is still the same. And for the Knicks, that's new territory. I mean, we're, we're coming from these times, especially under the Phil Jackson era or under Steve Mills, where, you know, the, the roster is just getting gutted and gutted and they're trying to find guys to fit with this guy and fit with that guy. This regime... Under Leon Rose, I mean, they've been really keeping a lot of the core guys together. R.J. Barrett talked about the only basketball he's known in his five years with the Knicks has been with Julius Randle. And so from a continuity perspective and trying to improve from within, I'm certainly with that I'm, and I'm on board with that. I've been preaching that. But then you have the other side of the fan base that says it seems sitting on a war chest of assets. You're seeing Damian Lillard's going to the Bucs, and why weren't we in on Drew Holiday? When is the time that Leon is going to unload and and get somebody in here that's going to change our fortunes? What, what do you think about the, that dichotomy? Look, there are some interesting uh, moves potentially to come. Uh, we don't know about Joel Embiid. We don't know about Giannis, although I suspect Giannis is a lot happier. I loved this quote yesterday about effing a lot of money or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, that was great. Uh, and we don't know about Donovan Mitchell as well, who I think would be a nice piece that maybe you don't have to blow up the team like you would have had to blow it up last year if you were trying to go after him. I like, you know, we, we've dealt with so many wholesale changes over the last two decades. I like the fact that it's it's essentially the same core as last year. You suspect they're only getting better. Jalen Brunson may have the best contract in the NBA. Yeah, He's only absolutely. getting better. Absolutely. He should be an all-star. Yeah. I thought he should have been an all-star last year. He, in my opinion, is an all-star and one of the best point guards in the league. Uh, I hope that the World Cup experience uh, you know, gives RJ some confidence. He took a leadership role, had a great run. That was tremendous. Shout out to Canada. What a win over the United States in the bronze medal game. Sorry, I had to bring it up, but I was buzzing for that. Uh, and you know, there's there's obviously some guys that need to to grow up and and, and evolve and do better. And I want to see where Mitchell Robinson is at and Quinton Grimes is at. I'm very excited about Divincenzo. And to me, the biggest question is really Julius Randle. Which mm. Julius is it going to be? Is it going to be regular season Julius Randle of last year and two seasons ago or three seasons ago now? Is it going to be the Julius of two years ago who was a bit of a bust? Is it playoff Julius Randle? Which Julius are we getting now? Uh, when he's on and when he's playing team basketball and he's not, you know, moping and, and settling for annoying step back threes when there's three guys on you, uh, he drives me insane. Yeah. Uh, but when he's when he's actually playing team ball and he's and he's actually like, you know, distributing and being a leader and, and getting in there and muscling, he's a great guy to have on your team. I just wonder which guy. So to me, the biggest question is on him. I'm happy that the fan base is warming up to tips. Finally, it felt like they were starting to lose faith in him. Like, that's our guy. And I, and I love having him lead the way. So I feel good. And I think that this year is going to be huge. And guess what? The biggest thing to me is all of a sudden it feels like the Knicks are a destination. Mm -hmm. And they weren't. As much as we don't want to admit it, we, we are not being used anymore, in my opinion, as a leverage piece. We're not being a laughing, a laughing stock. We're not a, a toxic place. We're a place that when you talk about Joel Embiid, when you talk about Giannis, when you talk about Donovan Mitchell, and by the way, I'm not hanging my hat on that. I don't think <clears> we need that necessarily to save us. That's not like our lottery ticket. I feel like we have finally become a place where people want to play, and that is a huge upgrade from the last you know 20 or so years. Yeah, no doubt about it. And... We talked about, you know, some of those big pieces and Joel Embiid in, in his media day press conference with the Sixers. He, he preached his loyalty. He, he wants to stick it, stick it out with Philadelphia. But he also said, I'm not here for lost seasons either. And so we'll see, because to me, I, I think Philly's on fire. The whole Harden situation, he's certainly intent on not coming to work. I'll have to see how, how the dominoes play out with Embiid. But that's also why the continuity theme is interesting because I am excited about this team. I am optimistic about this team and I still feel like they're going to have a very fun and competitive season and that'll make it fun for the fans. But I do see a ceiling with this team. 
Yes. And it, it's it's very difficult to see this team being a true contender with Julius Randle and even Jalen Brunson as being the best player on the team. I still think that there, there's one they're one piece away from truly contending. And that's when when you when you spoke about Julius and which Julius are we getting. I'm not I don't really I don't think it's the regular season Julius that I'm concerned with because I think Brunson is going to do enough like he did last year to really take that pressure off of Julius. To me, it's in the postseason because right. it's in the postseason where that's where you make your bread and butter. That's where the stars really establish themselves on that main stage. Brunson did that. You look at Jokic and Murray and what they did. It's not just being talented and being, being able to put the ball in the basket. But you've got to have that mental toughness, you know, that mental endurance to really cut through, make quick decisions and impact the game when you're, you know, in April and May and June. And I'm just not sure if Randall has that. Uh, right now, and I agree with everything that you just said, right now I think that we have one budding superstar in Jalen Brunson. I don't know really what to call Julius Randall. All-star, sure, but is he is he that second guy? Like you look at Boston, you know, they have – Tatum and Brown and they just got Drew Holiday and Chris Stapps. Like they they got they got a pretty good lineup, you know, and I know that they lost some pieces as well. Uh you obviously look at the Bucks who I think are are to me the class of the uh, Eastern Conference right now after that trade. Um you know, they've got multiple superstars. Uh, everyone has at least two. I don't believe you need a big 3, but the question is is Randall if there was a big 3, is he the 3 or is he the 2? I tend to lean towards him being the 3. Now, I'm not one of these fans like I'm good now. He's our guy. Like I want him to succeed. I'm not yeah, rooting against right, him. Right. I, I, I like he. He has done a great job for us. And that 2020, 2021 season is one of my favorite seasons in recent memory. Um, I, I should have wore. I have the the We Here sweatshirt mm. from my friends at Breaking Tea when he said that. In, you know, in the darkness of the pandemic, when there were no fans at the games, that team was so much Put fun us to back watch. On the map. And and it gave us something to look forward to in, in 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 like a depressing winter time here in New York City, right? And he was a massive part of that. Yeah. And so I want him to succeed in the orange and blue. I just hate when he's sulking, when he's when he's taking bad shots, when he's you know not leading because he has to be a leader. So uh, I agree with you. Who's that extra guy? Um, you know, is it Donovan next year? I don't know. He seems to be happy now. Wasn't a great playoff performance for him. I would love Donovan to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but like. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced he wants to be a Nick. I'm, I'm convinced, convinced he was upset, right? Yeah, yeah. He wanted it. He he he's still flirting with us from afar. He's at Mets games. Yeah. I know his dad and all that, but like it just yeah. feels like he wants to be a Nick. Yeah. And I would like him to be a Nick. I think he could be great for us. Uh, I just don't know if we get that guy this year. I think it's next year. I, I think it is next year. But I have a feeling we're top Miami, five, right? Top five. Yes. Is top five fair. I, I believe so. I believe so. I, I think that this team has to come in. First of all, if you can't afford any slow starts, yeah. this team's got to come out right away and get right to it. Their first 10 games are tough, man. I mean, when they, within their first 10 games, they play Boston twice, one at home, one on the road. They play Cleveland twice on a back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. home and home. They play at New Orleans. You, you see in the news, Felt Zion. Yeah. We'll see how yeah. that looks. Yeah. At Atlanta, you never know. That could be tricky. You play Milwaukee, the new Bucks. Uh, Dame yeah, Giannis yeah. in Milwaukee. And then you got a home game against the Clippers. I mean, those are some tough, tough games, man. They're going to yes. be tested early. I do believe that, yes, while Milwaukee and the Celtics are, are that top tier, three through five, to me, is, is any man's taking. I think the Knicks can take it. But I, like I said, they've got to get off to a fast start. And they've got to leave with their defense offensively, it may take time for things to click. It may take time for a guy like a DiVincenzo to get acclimated to that second unit and have those guys gelling. But defensively, is something that they can rely on right away. And so I'm very going to be very interested to see if they come out resting on their laurels or if they come out hungry to start the season. How do you feel about Obi Toppin leaving? It was... I never saw. I know him and Tibbs weren't on the best of terms, yeah. right? That was the word. Yeah, but yeah. man, it just it felt like he was getting better. It's like we we love our own, right? We right. love our, that's why we love RJ. That's why when RJ does great things, it's like everyone is so happy for him because he's our guy. Yeah, uh, and that's why Chris Stapps leaving was was still a bummer, and I was kind of holding out hope he'd come back somehow. But that's <laughs> neither here nor there. I was bummed to see Obi go, and I don't feel like we got too much for him, but it felt like it had to happen, right? It was a marriage that was doomed from the start if they weren't in, intending to, to trade, if they couldn't trade Julius Randle. And yeah. 
They went in into the draft. They got their guy. When when you looked at it on paper, they got a lot of value for him. He had college basketball's player of the year slipping down in the draft. He was a CAA guy being rep by Leon Rose's son. I'm sure that had to, a lot to do with it, as we see Devin Vassell just getting paid by the Spurs. <laughs> he was a guy that, that I had liked there because we still need a wing. But with Toppin, once they drafted him, and then Julius having that outstanding All-NBA year in the pandemic season, that created... That, that glut there because Tibbs was never going to play these guys major minutes together. Mm. And Toppin was buried. He became a 10-minute-a-night type of guy. And so it was a divorce that was needed for both sides. He and his camp wanted more playing time. And for the Knicks, they, they were just not getting much out of that position. And so it leaves a huge hole there. And now you have to trade him for pennies on the dollar. That was, there was, it was another L when, he, when it comes to the draft, at the, them yeah. drafting at the top of the draft. Yeah, uh, that that has been a uh, a sore spot for us. The the draft hasn't been great, but uh, man, seeing him in that Pacers jersey yesterday, oh, it's brutal. Uh, it was brutal, uh, man. And uh, then he's got like he looks like he's got like a Pacers haircut. I don't know if Halliburton yeah. like went in his barber. I, it didn't look good, man. You know, he's a Brooklyn kid, man. He's a Brooklyn kid. Like yeah. his parents are in uh, the stands, and everyone, man, he's freaking dunking on the Hawks in that game and the yeah. playoff game, and everyone's going nuts, like. Uh, again, one of our own. So it was a bummer. And it was, and I think what's hurting me the most is that it's the Pacers, right? Like if you went to Sacramento or right. something or New Orleans, right. like, all right, whatever, no harm, no foul. The freaking Pacers, I hate yeah. those guys. So he and know. Halliburton are going to be running and gunning, man. I, I think, I think he's going to do well there. So Maturin, my, my, uh, Montreal oh, yeah. as well. Oh yeah. He's amazing. That yeah. That's going to be a little bit of a squad. And once again, we're talking to Ariel Helwani. Nick's sees t- training camp preview as uh training camp practice has, has just started today on Tuesday. So looking forward to that. So to everybody in the chat, hit that like button, hit the share button and subscribe to the channel and ariel just taking a step back you did mention tibbs and we talked about randall and those two those are the two most polarizing figures on this team when it comes to fan opinion some love them some hate them but when you look Mm -hmm. at these two guys and we talk about continuity and just kind of pull this thing back a little bit and examine their tenure here four years two years in the playoffs fifth seed Fourth seed, you won 41 games in in that first playoff run, 47 last year. You got to give him some credit, man. You got to give him some credit for the success. Uh, I love Tibbs. I I love Tibbs because of the connection to the 90s. Uh, I love that he's like a basketball lifer. The story is that he has no family. This is all he cares about. Uh, I love that he's a defensive-minded coach. I know that he drives people crazy with uh, some of his decisions and rotations. But look... You know, I don't know if he gets enough credit. Uh, I know his quote yesterday regarding uh, Evan Fournier stole a lot of uh, shine. You know, the 37 and yeah. 22 after he, you know, pulls the plug on on that first iteration of the team. Like, mm-hmm. it takes a lot to pull the plug, especially considering what Fournier is making, among mm-hmm. others. And so he adjusted. And a lot of people thought he wasn't going to adjust. And a lot of people thought he wasn't going to play the young guys. And so, of course, are there things that we can nitpick? I've never never subscribed to the, like, he he runs the players into the ground yeah. nonsense. Uh, he's a successful coach who has had tremendous success. You know, can he get you over the hump finally to be that, you know, championship winning coach? I think he has it in him. I think he's that darn good of a coach. But, you know, that's what people said about, like, the Frank Vogels of the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just have to have the right team around you. Right, have the right guys. You know what I mean? And I think he is one of those guys. I don't think, uh, I don't know, uh, name a coach. I don't think Eric Spolstra is that much better than uh, Tom Thibodeau. I, I don't think that um, Michael Malone is that much better than Tom Thibodeau. Obviously, there are levels, but to me, he's an elite coach. Mm-hmm. And this idea that we needed someone else, who, who are we getting? Who are we getting that's better than Tom Thibodeau that's out the there? That's the question right I have. Yeah, that, that's the question I, I pose to the fan base. It's like... You know, I've had my issues with Tibbs, as as many in the fan base has, course, has yeah. had. But I'm like, who's the guy who you can say immediately, you put this guy on this team and they're instantly better. They're, they're 5, 10, 15 games better than where Tibbs has gotten them in, in two out of the last four years. I don't know. And, and, and look, I'm sure there's a Jeff Van Gundy out there, right? Meaning, I don't mean Jeff Van Gundy in particular. I mean, like a, an assistant out there who's ready to break through. And I'm sure there's that guy. In fact, again, shout out to Canada. Jordy Fernandez blew me away, yeah, assistant yeah. coach for uh, the Sacramento Kings. He blew me away. And there's great stories like Mike Brown getting another chance. There's obviously different fits. But you, uh, I don't know, you get the sense 
um, and correct me if you feel otherwise, that the Brunsons and the Barretts and the the uh, the Randas of the world, for the most part, like playing for Tibbs. That's the sense that I get. Of course, there are moments like we talked about with Obi Toppin, where you're like, okay, is he the right fit? But I don't know. Another New York guy who loves being a part of the team, who gives it his all, who uh, who has brought us back to prominence. You know, we're not talking about can they make the play in. We're talking about can they be top five? Yeah. Can they hang with Boston, which I think they can. Can they hang with Miami? I think we're better than Miami, honestly. Yeah, I think that I think Miami so. lost some important pieces, and I think we're better than them. And I know they have the superstar in Jimmy Butler, but I'll take our team against Miami any day of the week. And so I really think what I like about this team is we don't have that super superstar. We have the budding superstar. And we don't have that second superstar, in my opinion. But we have a good, deep team. We got a team that could go 9, 10 deep, I think. And they play well together. And uh, they seem to like each other. And there's just good vibes. Uh, I love Josh Hart. He's probably my favorite Nick right now, just because he reminds me of a 90s Nick, right? He yeah, just does yeah. a little bit of everything. It's good vibes. And, and, and you know, we don't have, we, we, like, we, we've always had some drama. Uh, and now it's just like the, the drama is that there's no drama. It's like, where is the drama? They, no, it's good. We're good. Let the drama, go to Camden, New Jersey for the drama, <laughs> right? We want nothing to do with that. We're good over here. I'm happy. Drama free, man. Drama free. It's a new day in, in Knicksville. So certainly happy to, to, uh, to hear that. But when, when we talk about Tibbs and you mentioned the players, it seems like they enjoy playing for him. He hasn't lost the locker room. They, you know, picked it up tremendously, as he himself has said, 37 and 22 since they since they made the the rotation adjustments. So it's to me, it's it's a no brainer that when you bring in a Brunson, you bring in Josh Hart, coachable guys, guys with no ego, guys who want to play the way that the coach wants to play. It's no, it, it's it's easy to see that this team was able to improve. Because they've upgraded oh. in talent. They've upgraded in guys yes. that want to get it out the mud and do it the, the hard and the gritty way that, that Tibbs likes. And I think DiVincenzo is only going to add to that. He's going to bring that toughness, a winning mentality, someone who can make plays, a smart, cerebral player, and hopefully help them with their shooting because they're going to need a shooting in that lineup. Can I ask you a question? Does Dante end up being the starter? It's Grimes. Grimes is going to be the guy. It's going to be his job to lose. He will start. But yeah. I think the closing rotation is going to be any man's game. The mm -hmm. closing rotation is going to be determined based on how well you're playing throughout the game, how you're trending, what the matchups are that night, what the defensive matchups are that night. Do we need a little bit more playmaking, some more rebounding? So I think, you know, you're one in your four, your constants. Jalen's going to be out there in crunch time. Julius is going to be out there in crunch time. Two, three, and five is going to be any man's game. I think you could have Grimes close at the two. You could have IQ. You could have RJ. Yeah. You could have DiVincenzo. At the three, I think Hart's going to finish these games. Yeah. I mean, the first day when they traded him, he came to the Garden against the Utah Jazz, came off the bench, and finished that game. And he yeah. never looked back. He's he, his tips' his guy. And so I think Hart may be penciled in at the three. And then at the five, you may go Hartenstein, you may go Mitch. Again, matchup depending. So, but but I think Grimes deserves that opportunity because I I, okay. I think he can take another step. Yeah, and I like what Dante said yesterday. Like it's just it's very refreshing to hear guys just say like I just want to win. And yeah. I know there was a quote about RJ coming off the bench, which I think may have been somewhat yeah, taken it was, out of context. It was yeah, it was twisted. Yeah, but but still, like you could tell he was trying to say the right thing, but in the back of his mind, he was saying like, "I ain't coming off the bench. What are you yeah. guys talking about?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but he was trying his best. But the cadence let you know that he thought it was an insane conversation that they were having. Uh, I love all that stuff. That's all very fascinating to me. But uh, I, I tend to agree. Uh, Grimes deserves that. Uh, he had a great year last year. But I know, you know. And, and by the way, maybe the presence of Dante helps Grimes take it to the next level. Yeah. There was that one. One of my favorite plays of the entire season probably my favorite play of the entire season was it it was i think game two against miami grimes hurts his leg game five and then game five five game five. five yeah what a what, geez, yeah. sorry i was about yeah. to swear ah, it's a family uh, show but go ahead no problem that was tremendous yeah. man yeah. i love I, I probably watched that play the next day like 20 times yeah like you, I could hardly you really look like Willis Reed out there for a second, like just hobbling on that stiff leg and then went for it. I love that guy. I'm not rooting for yeah. him to get, you know, to get um, 
uh, a seat on the bench, but uh, I do think Dante is is going to make things very interesting in that position. Yeah, well, like I said, with Dante, they, they're going to need his help from a from a spot up shooter's perspective, and that's why I like the pickup. A lot of fans are saying, "Oh, you're overhyping the the guy. You're overhyping him." No, nah. I just feel like yes, it's it may be a small upgrade on paper. But when you can bring in a guy that can help close up some of your deficiencies as a team, it should help to elevate the entire team. It's it's like what the Hart's impact was. It's what Brunson's impact was. I think DiVincenzo, as a spot-up shooter, if you run some plays with him, for him, he can certainly help the, this team. 100%. I love the pickup. I didn't, Honestly, I didn't think he was going to sign with us. Yeah. Um, you know, I knew we had the, the Nova connection, but... I didn't, I didn't think it's very rare that there's a guy that we are targeting and we actually get that guy, like a guy that you're hearing about in late June and then early July. I'm like, oh, wow, it actually worked out. It usually uh, it usually works out that we're being used as leverage or something yeah. like that. So I love the pickup for sure. And, and with Grimes, I love the fact that he's, he's working out with J.J. Redick in the offseason. He's trying to learn how to uh, shoot off of movement. He's working out with Penny Hardaway, as he usually does. I'm hoping that there's a year three leap I, he, that's my mm. choice for that's my candidate for the biggest leap this season year three it's when a lot of the a lot of the analysts say that for for young players the game starts to slow down for them in year three year four things start to come together he's already got it together on the defensive front he's their toughest defender he draws the toughest assignments it's really on the offensive end that where i'd like to see him pick things up a little bit can he be a bit more uh, efficient from three, especially in the playoffs? I mean, only shot in the 20s yeah. from three. It was kind yeah. of brutal. Uh, we saw some some glimpses of his playmaking ability last season, putting the ball on the floor. And so I just want to see, can RJ, Julius, and Brunson help get him the ball? And when he gets the ball, can he be a bit more efficient in, in how he's moving or, or shooting the rock? But I, I like Grimes this year for sure. Yeah, I like that one as well. I'm 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 expecting a big jump out of RJ. I really mm. feel he's still so young. How old is he? He's like what? 23, 20, he's gonna be twenty three. Twenty three. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. man. It's crazy. I'm expecting a big jump. Uh, he played for the most part really well in the World Cup, and I think this is time. It's it's time for him to take that big jump. Uh, played pretty well in the playoffs as well, not towards the end. Um, but I still believe in him. And, and again, I'm, I'm biased towards him because he's our guy. We drafted him. He's Canadian. I'm Canadian. Uh, I'll always root for him. And he makes me frustrated, too, maybe because I love him so much. Yeah. But I, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel mature vibes out of him. Uh, I, I just I feel like people forget that he's so freaking young. He's yeah. so young. And I feel like the ceiling is still way up here for him. I hope so. Because if they're not able to get that big guy you're you're hoping for internal development and mm -hmm. there's no one who the spotlight is on brighter than than rj in terms of helping to to make that leap to help this team play better did i see you know when i looked at the world cup you a lot of fans well, a lot of fans want to see that eventual you know get some wiggle to his game get some movement into his game they they still feel like he moves a bit too stiff out there yeah i mean to me look i think there's still areas where he could be effective even if he doesn't if he's not the most agile out there um we'll have to see how, how that plays out there in the regular season you know consistency especially with his shot you certainly want to see that be there i think last year i was encouraged with him being able to get to the free throw line more often you want to see him knock those down but for rj it, it's just you know those those roller coaster yeah. those high peaks and low valleys he's got to try to cut that out and find some middle ground isn't it amazing though that if you look back at that draft it felt like yeah you know we kind you know we got a solid piece but not the superstar yeah zion Ja, and now both those guys are dealing with their own things and have a lot to prove, right? Uh, you suspect Ja comes back and 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 will hopefully bounce back and 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 be his old self. Who knows about Zion? But here's like RJ's still just kind of here, like you know, like yes, there's high, highs and lows. Yeah. But he's an important piece. He's starting. He, he there's no drama with him, so to speak. It's just our uh, desire to see him take that next step. But like, you know, in retrospect, it's kind of worked out for us. Of course, Ja has been a superstar, and and uh, when he's on, he's on. But it didn't I thought that this would have been one of those like and again we don't know how the story plays out with those two guys but you know like a, yeah, a freaking Steph Curry where we miss out by one yeah you know what I mean yeah when you look at Josh, like who knows but uh for now he's uh he, he's doing all right he's doing all right again 23 years old 
uh, has his moments when he's on, when he's aggressive, when he's taking it to the hoop, when he's freaking, you know, driving. And when he's confident, I think sometimes the confidence with him is a big issue. He misses yeah. some shots and he starts to lose confidence. When he's on, I think he could be a really important piece for us. And as I talked about the schedule that they're looking at, their first 10 games, he's going to have the, the biggest test. Uh, Boston, you, you got to tangle with Tatum and Brown. Uh, yeah. Cleveland, he might be put on a, a guy like a Darius Garland if, you, if, you're, you know, if you're trying to match up. He may be matched up on a guy like a Darius Garland or have to take on a Donovan Mitchell. Uh, you have Ingram in new orleans you know uh will he be on middleton will he have to draw Giannis or dame in, in some mismatches tough. against milwaukee so rj playing a three he's going to be critical in terms of his wing defense and that's another concern of mine especially with the Knicks' big threes between julius brunson and rj is can they get up to championship caliber defense that you really need to, to lock things down man i just think that that's too many holes in, in your lineup all that said, I actually feel like the guy who has the most pressure on his shoulders, believe it or not, I wonder if you agree, is Jalen, if only because last year was so great. Yeah. And now the the sentiment is like, oh, man, they got him for a steal. And, and, and everything I said, I believe in. But I think he has to back it up yeah. now, right? The, the, the World Cup wasn't great. It wasn't a great showing out of him. Uh, all of Team USA wasn't great. But, like, I think that there was some um, thought and belief that, like, he could be a true leader on that team. And... I just hope that this isn't like a year two dip. Like it's it's all been like this for him, and there's nothing to make us like believe or, or or even like feel or suggest that he is going to take a dip. But I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him to prove everyone right, and 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 to prove that he is one of those elite guys. Like he he should be the face and the leader of this team, and with that comes a lot of pressure, right? Yeah. Uh, any superstar would agree with that. So I'm very, very curious to see if he could do it. Because if he does, man, that's the biggest difference. That's that's the reason why Embiid will want to come to New York or a, a Giannis or a Donovan or anyone, right? Like if you have that guy, if you have that superstar point guard, everyone wants to play for you. And that's what we have never had, right? Uh, arguably dating back to when? Freaking Walt Frazier? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Uh, a super true blue superstar point guard. I know there was Mark Jackson and Rod Strickland and shout out to Chris Childs, uh, Charlie Ward, et cetera, et cetera. Steph mm, was never a big Steph guy. I uh, actually hated that trade. Shout out to Machek Lampy. I'm still upset that they got rid of him. You know what I'm saying? I never liked that trade. Yeah, I never liked yeah. it. But you get the point. Uh, he could be the big difference maker. Obviously, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. For sure. Once again, we're talking to Ariel Hawani. KFTV training camp week is underway. This is our Knicks training camp preview. CP the franchise here. Salute to Knicks Nation. Hit that like button. Share this video and subscribe to the channel. And you mentioned a good a good point on, on Brunson, just in terms of the year two expectations. It's going to be expectations on him now. Ex expectations on the team to get back or exceed where they where they the, to the point where they finished. Uh, last year and so i'm going to be interested to see how he adjusts you know the whole league is going to be keying in on him again the world cup he played in the world cup he did lock some minutes there not nothing crazy but you know it's it's additional wear and tear and he already has a, a big role to play on this team and so i hope that he can get through the 82 game season and and get back into the playoffs where to to uh finish or, or to play better than than where he finished last year 41 points in the closing game against the miami heat in game six man it, it, it was he the only player i mean outside of Jokic and murray the only player to solve that miami heat defense it's true was jalen brunson yes and that's why it was so disappointing because if we had just one more guy show up i felt like we could have beaten miami yeah and who knows what would have happened ultimately do we beat denver no probably not but a finals run would have been fantastic. And I think we could have beaten uh, Boston or at least, you know, made, made them sweat made a little bit. Made it competitive. For right? sure. Man, losing to Miami, that sucked. Yeah, that sucked. for sure. I hated that. Uh, another guy who I believe has a lot to prove is Quick. I believe yeah. Quick has a lot to prove because yes. he had such a stellar season last year on both ends of the floor, dynamic on the defense. That they knew they recognized him as the, the kind of the captain of that defense, the signal mm -hmm. caller, the quarterback, the safety, if you will. And offensively, his game rounded out, shot the ball a lot better. His true shooting percentage seemed to have improved, especially in the second half of the season. But in the playoffs, it was uh, it was a no Nothing. show. 
And with him going into his contract year, he wants a big deal. He wants to show that he could either be the top six man in the league or a quality starter. I think Quick is going to have a lot to prove coming into this season as well. I wonder, you know, considering where the Knicks are at come the trade deadline, I, I wonder what his future is because, you know, he's always kind of involved in these rumors. And I love him as well. Again, a guy that we drafted. It's rare that we, uh, we sign that guy, right, after the four years are up. Uh, RJ, or, or was Mitch the first? Was RJ the first or Mitch the I first? I think One Mitch, of Mitch got it first. Mitch was like the yeah. first in like 20 years or something yeah. crazy like yeah. that, right? Um, so it's just, it's, it's, it's just what, you know, one of those things where you want to see that guy succeed. Uh, he's had some amazing moments. That Celtics game was incredible, right? The one um, late in the season yeah, no on a Brunson, Sunday night. Celtics, yeah, no OT. Brunson. Incredible, incredible. So, like, he is that guy, and I love his defense, and I like his leadership as well. Um, he's an important piece. He's he's an absolute important piece. He doesn't uh, talk very much. Like yesterday, I was watching his content. It's like very short answers yeah, and yeah. things like that. But uh, no, nah, he's the man. And I know he was asked about his contract, and he said that he leaves that to his uh, to his agent and all that stuff. So he shied away from any uh, sound bites. But no, I'm I'm uh, I'm very happy he's still on the team. I didn't like to hear his name mentioned in rumors and things like that. I'm I didn't I, you know I know some fans were trying to you know say that. We should go after Drew Holiday or something. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm These good. are our guys. I'm good. I like I like having our guys, right? Yeah. I don't want just a hodgepodge of uh, random pieces. So let's see how far these guys can go, and uh, let's see where we're at come February. Yeah, n- no question about it. I, I didn't think the the Holiday trade made sense from a Knicks standpoint. I mean, look at the, the price that Boston paid. They gave yeah. up two quality rotation pieces, two big pieces to their defense. When you talk about Brogdon, and Robert Williams, and then they, on top of that, they gave out two first-round picks. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's Robert a Williams costly a big price loss for them. Robert uh, Williams a big big loss. How do you think Chris Sapp's going to do for them? You know what? That, that's an interesting question. I think he's going to add to their three points prowess. You know that that's one thing that um, that their coach prides himself on. They want to get a lot of three-point shots up. They had Horford, uh, damn near leading the league in three-point accuracy. So I think Chris Sapp's is going to add to that. I think they'll be able to play off of him and and utilize his playmaking potential. It's just health, durability with Chris Sapp's. Yeah. And and when you get into April and May and June, is he going to be there for him? Is he going to hold up against the playoff physicality? I think that's the only thing that uh, that's the, only, the biggest question mark that I have for him. What, what about you? How do you think about uh, man? I thought he, he looked great season? last year with Washington, right? Yeah. And the thing was, you know, he's he's obviously he's obviously skilled. Durability has always been the big issue. Uh, injuries, prone to injuries, whatever. But the one thing that I thought was great for him in Washington was he was kind of out of sight, out of mind. So yeah, he almost forgot yeah. that he played for Washington, right? right? right. No one was talking Crushes about off. him. No pressure. He's just doing his thing. He's balling. He's, he's he's racking up big points, big minutes, big rebounds. You know, he, he's showing the complete game, but it's for a, a somewhat basement-dwelling team with uh, not huge aspirations. All that is out the window now with Boston, right? Yeah. Uh, now there's a lot of pressure, especially now. You know, Robert is gone. Marcus Smart is gone. It's it's a new era for them. Brogdon is gone. So I'm really curious now. You know, good for him. I won't say all the pressure. This isn't you know New York circa 2015, 16 or whatever it was. Uh, Tatum, he's still the guy. Brown has a ton of pressure after that big contract. So I think he could still ball out and 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 kind of by with less of a spotlight on him. But coming off that year in Washington, I will always root for Chris Stapps. Uh, I have a, a friend, not trying to name drop, but like a, a fellow gigantic Knicks fan, Action Bronson. We always yeah. talk about the Knicks, and uh, he is not a Chris Stapps fan. Yeah. He thought he was too soft to be a Nick. And I will always root for him. I, I you know, I met him uh, on my 33rd birthday mm. at JFK Airport. As he was about to fly out to Las Vegas, I was flying out to cover UFC 189, Conor McGregor against Chad Mendez. He's mm-hmm. about to fly out to Las Vegas as a skinny Latvian kid who was just drafted by the Knicks. After Stephen A. Smith says that we've been bamboozled and all this stuff. And I went up to him and said, don't listen to Stephen A. Don't listen to anyone. New York has your back. We're rooting for you. And so ever since then, like I had a kinship with the guy. He's obviously a... Uh, uh, you know, he, he's a big Knicks fan, excuse me, he's a big MMA fan. So I actually ended up like striking up a relationship with him, but I really want him to succeed. I'm very curious to see. I think it's a good move for him and the Celtics. I'm very curious to see how it pans out. You, you had him on your show on the Ariel Hawani basketball show, yeah. courtesy of Showtime Basketball. What was your biggest takeaway 
when you talked about the Knicks with him? Because uh, from my opinion, he seemed very uh, c- contrite. He seemed like he was he, he regretted that period in his in his life that that whole Knicks fog and and the fallout. Uh, it felt to me like he still had lo- like. For lack of a better analogy, it felt like he was the guy talking about like his first love, right? And there were some regrets, not only on his part, but just like how it all kind of panned out. I think he loves New York. I think he loves the fans. I think I'm speaking for him now. I think in retrospect, maybe he would have done some things a little bit differently towards the end. Uh, I think he was put in a really tough spot with Phil Jackson and that interview and just the way that whole regime was handling things. Uh, the one, the one that hurt me in the heart um, was uh, remember when he got traded and he posted the gif of him yes. like dapping up uh, Luca like literally yeah. seconds later. I was yeah, like, yeah, I was at that game, man. I was at that game. Yeah, yep. yep. Yeah, it was that was tough. That yep. was tough. It's like, man, you really want to uh, to leave? Yeah, like, you're not even heartbroken. Yeah. I was heartbroken. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I really feel like if a if an opportunity presented itself. I think he would have been happy to come back. I just don't know if uh, it doesn't seem like there was any opportunity. I, I, I think yeah. after that interview, some fans were saying like, oh, let's get him back. Trying to get him back. Have him back. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know if it was a thing. And I don't really know how he would have fit in. I mean, I guess, uh, you know, there's always a spot for a guy like Chris Stapps. Mm-hmm. But who, who would you rather, like you, if he plays the five, would you rather him or would you rather Mitchell Robinson? Um, he's more dynamic as, offensively yeah. than Mitchell, but Mitchell's great on defense. He is. It's it's tough, man. Mitch is my guy, you know. Yeah, Mitch, is, Mitch know. has been a friend of the program. He's the but, man. I love Mitch. He, he he does so much for this team when it comes to the offensive yeah, rebounds, him. his ability to, to to defend the paint. But he's he's a guy who's been asking for more of a role in the offense. We'll we'll see, man. I I don't think it's going to come for is Mitch. Happy? What's going on? What's what's the deal? I I think Mitch is just bored. I think he's bored, man. I, I mean, just just if we just take human nature into this thing. Yes, you're in the NBA. You're on the brightest stage. And he said so on Instagram, on, on our, our KFTV page. He said, listen, I'm humbled and blessed to play this game. But you got to be bored when you're not getting the ball, man. We're a 48-minute game. Yeah. And you, and you got to take on Jokic and Davis and Embiid and, and Giannis. You know, stand in front of Giannis when, when he's running down like a freight train. You want to get the ball. You want a Gotham lob. Give me a hook shot or two. Yeah, Does, no, for sure. Yeah. What's what's the most amount of games that Mitch has played in a season? Man, that's a good question. Um, well, let's let's take a look. Well, while we can, Mitchell Robinson. Um, how many games has he played? The most amount of games that Mitch has played. I want to see seventy-two. Seventy-two this year, at least. 72. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I, I I don't think he has ever gotten to seventy-two. Well, uh, uh, two years see. ago. Two years. Did he? Ago. Yeah. Oh, he se- nailed seventy-two. Seventy-two. God bless. Seventy-two. Started last year, 62. fifty-nine. Last year, fifty-nine. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's get back to that. That's the most by far. I mean, he had a 61, he had 66 in his rookie year. Yeah. 59 last year isn't enough, right? I mean, yeah. It just, again, durability. Um, yeah, and we'd love to see some improvement on the offensive end. But again, that's one of our guys. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not advocating for him to leave anytime soon. But uh, I like Mitch also because I also like the fact that he doesn't take himself seriously. I love the way right. he talks to the media, I like that. things yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like those yeah. are one of those guys that you want to root for. He, he likes to have fun up. with it. He's got a good relationship, it seems like, with Hartenstein and and Sims. I forgot what Love they call themselves, like the Center Collection or something like that. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. But but you know, Tibbs has shown that Hartenstein. I thought he finished the year very well. He was able to use those guys, two guys, interchangeably. So I think that will stay the same in terms of, you know, Mitch might start, but Artenstein might, might close some games depending on what you need. If you need a little bit more floor spacing, if he's trending a little bit better than Mitch, especially on the offensive end. And then you have Sims. You know, Sims, while he is a third string center, you may have some twin tower lineups where if the Knicks are too small at the four at one night, if they feel like Hart is too small at the four, you may have situations where where it's a Hartenstein Sims te- uh, combo in the front court. I'm cool with that. I love Hartenstein. Yeah. Hartenstein yeah. was great last year. In the playoffs for the most part he was great too. Uh he he's uh he's a freaking rugged tough guy. Don't really know who he reminds me of. He reminds me of someone from back in the day. Maybe you can uh weigh in on that, but mm. uh just, you know, I don't know. I was thinking Kurt Thomas, but he's bigger than Kurt Thomas. Um I was thinking Buck Williams. Uh, but it's a little bit bigger than Buck Williams too. I don't know. Big dude, yeah. bruiser, doesn't shy away from the contact. Love him. 
In, in other Nick news, how about the potential return of Action Jackson? Man, Mark Jackson could be uh, is close to returning to the booth to fill in for Clyde. Clyde's kind of yeah. winding down the schedule. He's close to retirement. Doesn't want to do as many road games. What do you think about Mark Jackson coming back? So initially, I heard this rumor. Or I read this rumor that there was talk of Breen, Van Gundy, and, and Jack Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Is that crazy? Is that still a thing? Well, the latest report, and it was from Andrew Marchand. You had him on your yeah. show. Yeah, he yeah. said Jackson in, Van Gundy not in, which I okay. thought was interesting. No plans because for I, Van Gundy at the moment. Yeah, I thought that uh, the Van Gundy piece was a little far fetched, mm. uh, just because he's been, you know. He's been uh, critical and whatnot, and it, it didn't end so well. But, you know, that was so long ago now. That would have been a dream. I yeah. mean, I, I, I yeah. enjoy them very much as a trio. And, like, man, we get the freaking NBA on ABC slash ESPN A team for the last 16 or so years as our local team. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we get Mike Breen, who is one of the nicest human beings that I've ever had the, the, the pleasure of meeting, um, the fact that we get him on a regular basis as our play-by-play -play guy is just unbelievable. So, yeah. uh, yes, sign me up for that trio. And if not, I'm down with Jackson coming back. Uh, I, I don't mind him at all as an analyst. Uh, I know that he sometimes rubs people the wrong way, but I thought he was fine. Uh, I think Doris Burke is fantastic. I think yeah. J.J. Redick is fantastic. I think that um, obviously Breen is great. Uh, I know Knicks fans don't love RJ. I, I, I like him. I think he's fun. Our, Richard Jefferson. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. ESPN is fine. But like that, that was an eight. That, to me, they were an That's an eight team. Were, were you yes. surprised that they disbanded shocked. that group? And shocked. Absolutely shocked. I, I was shocked, shocked too. Good. Shocked more that Van Gundy, I, I, I at some point, you thought maybe like Jackson would go back to coaching or something like that. I know, I think I could, I could like, I know the people that worked on the broadcast all love Van Gundy. You had always heard stuff about um, the NBA, you know, not being happy. Yeah. That, that to me, like made him so great. I like you know that. What I mean, like, I felt yes, like he was he speaking for like me. It is. Like coach, yes. you were right on on that point. Yes. He tells it like it is. He's not sugarcoating. He's not talking in hyperbole and nonsense. I mean, I could listen to Mike Breen, all day, every day. He's one of the greatest play-by-play -play men of my lifetime, your lifetime. And him and, and Jeff with that little Knicks connection yeah. you know, deep down. It was just like a dream for us. It was fantastic. And I love Doris. Yeah. I love her. I, she's tremendous. But uh, yeah, I, would, I was shocked when, when it's like, you know, to me, like there, there, there are, there are classic duos, uh, you know, like John Madden and Pat Summerall and uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman now, et cetera, et cetera. And like, they were a duo, yeah. Not to mention a, a trio, trio. Yeah, and they yeah. just got sort of like unceremoniously disbanded yeah. like that. Kind of a bummer. That kind that one bummer. caught me by surprise. And then I had figured with that move that they were gonna boost JJ Redick all the way up to the front seat, but then they kind of went old guard in a way by bringing in Doc Rivers, who yes, they say he and Breen have a close relationship, but Doc Rivers is he's a basketball lifer. He's been in every aspect of the game. You know, Doris yeah. Burke, great work. No no uh, offense to her, but I thought they would have went like with fresh voices next to Breen, but they kind of just, I feel you know, kind of just recycled uh, some names, but I, I thought they, they ruined the chemistry that they had with, uh, with JVG and Mark. And that's the word chemistry, right? Um, I like the chemistry that Reddick, RJ, and Ryan Ruko Ruko. have. Yeah. Um, Ruko's very, very talented. Yeah. But you know, when you listen to those guys, that Breen Van Gundy and and Mark Jackson are friends, right? And uh, I don't, I don't know what the status is of their relationship. You know, Breen Doris and uh, and Doc Rivers. But yeah. uh, the I, I may have mentioned this to you, but like the first game that I ever got to do sidelines, it was Breen and Van Gundy and me. It was in uh, 2019. It was uh, Mavericks yep. at Pelicans, and I couldn't believe that. Like, how the hell? Like, what lottery did I win in life that I get to be the sideline guy for Breen Van Gundy? And we went to dinner the night before, and we went to lunch the day of the game. And all they're doing is like cracking jokes on each other and making fun of each other. And even in the text thread about like the pickup times, they're cracking jokes. And it's like, man, these guys are like legit close friends. And it comes across that way on TV. It was like yeah. the, the, the it, was, it was like the experience of a lifetime to just be a tiny, tiny piece of that broadcast. And uh, it's it's a bummer that it's ending. So when I started to hear or read that maybe they would reunite under the MSG network banner. I was like, holy smoke, yeah. we actually get these guys for like 60-something games now? Yeah. But maybe too good to be true.
Who is your? I'm going to ask you this question that that you had asked on on your podcast with uh, with Andrew Marsh and on the Ariel Hawani Basketball Show. Yes, Who's sir. your dream team? Two or three man yeah. broadcast in studio host. Who's your dream team? All right, so this is super tough for me because I'm inclined to go with Marv because he introduced me to basketball. He was the guy in the 90s NBA on NBC, but uh, over time, Mike has become my guy, and I've had a chance to work with him, so I'm very biased towards him. And so I'll go with Mike Breen. As my play-by-play, I do want to also mention Ian Eagle, who mm. I think doesn't get talked about enough, yeah. who I think does a tremendous job. And even his son, No Eagle, has turned into an unbelievable play-by-play mm-hmm. guy at such a young age. So I think it's easy to go, you know, Breen, Van Gundy, like that's the team. I don't think that's fun for these purposes. So I'm going to actually go Breen and then give a shout-out to a guy from my youth. So I can't go with Marv because I'm going with Breen, but I'm going to go with the czar of the telestrator mm-hmm. go with Mike Fratello. Okay. I love right. Fratello yeah. and uh, Marv. I love their relationship, cracking jokes. And, yeah. and Breen has a similar, you know, sense of humor. So I think that would be fun. And then finally, it, it feels too Nick centric. If I then go Breen, czar and a Johnny Hoops, ah, who good. I love. Johnny, yeah. I love Johnny yeah. Hoops. Do I go with like a Bill Raftery? You know, I love classic. Raftery. Yeah, Ra- I love his energy. Yeah, I yeah. love his. Ex- Is it also bad that there are no actual players in that mix? Not necessarily. Yeah. I'll go with. Screw. I'm gonna go with Johnny Hoops. Shout out to Johnny yeah. Hoops, the legend. I go with Johnny. Johnny Hoops back in the day when I got a satellite dish in uh, in '97 for that '97 '96 '97 season. I got it midway through that season, getting that MSG um, network broadcast for the first time you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. and it's johnny hoops and marv i was like this is freaking amazing and watching the msg sports desk afterwards i yep. mean you have to understand growing up in montreal no one cared about basketball i mean it was as irrelevant as like rugby is today in the united states if that analogy makes any sense to anyone and i would stay up at night and I would position my Walkman so I can listen to the Knicks post game show on WFAN because you couldn't get it yes. anywhere. Yeah, no, the Raptors yeah. were irrelevant. The Grizzlies were irrelevant. They were one year old at the time. Um, it was just so special to have that. So I'll go with those guys. And then yeah. in the studio, I got to go with Costas. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Know, I mean, he was the guy. Did that surprise yeah. you? Who'd you think? Ernie Johnson? I think I might lean Ernie. I'd only, yeah. only be, I love Casas, right? Uh, because yeah. that, that was our beginnings. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you would listen to Casas like like your parents would listen to, like, you know, Ted Koppel or something, a Nightline. Like, yeah, this was Walter serious Cronkite. stuff. Yeah, Walter Cronkite. This was serious stuff. What are the Knicks doing? But um, I would go Ernie only because it just seems like you're watching the game with a friend. Yeah, right? Or Ernie's right. he's just so down to earth, man. And he just he's had so that good. personality. I love the, 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 the banter that they have back and forth on that inside the TNT, inside the NBA on TNT. I just feel like Ernie's that guy that like you could sit on the couch with him and watch the game. No, you're hundred percent. He doesn't get talked about enough. That is the greatest studio team yes, of all time. Absolutely. Yeah, of any sport, yeah. of any broadcast. And it's obviously so great because of the personalities, but if he was a guy who had an ego, who wanted to talk, who didn't distribute, who wasn't an ultimate team player with yeah. no ego, that thing doesn't work. Not it does all. not work at all. Not he's the all. point guard. And uh, it's it's so important to have that guy. And he's so damn good at his job. And you know what's so amazing about that um, you know, that studio and, and those guys and the way they talk about the game? Again, no filter. They tell it like it is. There are times where I don't really care about the game, but I make a point to watch either the pregame or the postgame or the halftime show because I just want to hear what they're saying about the NBA. But I feel like because they've been on the air for so long and because they've been constants throughout the season during the week, they have gotten us through some tough times. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's yeah. so rare that you look towards the studio team of a sports show to help us grieve Kobe Bryant, um, you know, pandemic. True, so true. many things that happened. Like I was looking to those guys for guidance, for answers, for for some sort of comfort, right? To mourn with them. And they always hit the right notes. They hit the funny notes. They hit the sad notes. They hit the morning notes. They hit the exciting notes. Like they hit every single note every single time. Right. Always the right way. It's a very underrated skill. They don't get enough praise. I know they get a ton of praise, but like they really are the gold standard. And I don't think there's any team close. I mean, you compare that with all due respect to what we get on other networks and other sports. It's just like it's not even it's night and day. Yeah. And it shocks me that other networks don't try to recreate it. The closest thing to it is I don't know if you're a soccer fan, but uh, Champions League coverage, mm-hmm. Paramount Plus with Kate Abdo and Thierry Henry mm-hmm. and um, and uh, Jamie Carragher and, and Michael Richards. Mm-hmm. That's the closest thing to it. But they're a very young team. 
but they are stealing. You could tell they are stealing the blueprint. Mm. Let them speak. Let them breathe. Talk about the good and the bad. It's great, but there will never be another inside the NBA. Yeah, I agree. And, and so uh, I'm putting Ernie as my studio host. I'll go with Marv as my play-by-play guy. I love Bree. They, they're like 1A and 1B, but only because of the origins, I, I got to go with Marv. Like, that was, you know, my yeah. heyday as a Knicks fan, 90s Knicks. It, it's Marv calling that on the NBA on NBC as well. I would go... I love I love the czar pick. I'll go Jeff Van Gundy. It's yeah. still, still my favorite Knicks like, coach. Marvin Jeff is a cool duo. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a cool duo. Even I gotta, I gotta find a spot for my guy Gus Johnson, though, man. I'm putting him on the radio. Gus okay. Johnson, Johnny Hoops, on the radio. It is very Nick centric, but those, are, those are my guys, man. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I'm going with Johnny Most. I, I wish I lived in an era where I could listen to Johnny Most. I know he's a Celtics guy. Yeah, man. yeah. Damn, 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 damn. You know, that's amazing. Um, that that would be incredible. Yeah. Or like Vince Scully. Vince wasn't really a basketball guy, but like the idea of listening to him on the radio calling anything yeah yeah sounded and I, I was a hubie brown guy too man oh yeah i was, was a big amazing. hubie guy, brown guy oh still and, am and i think he's still gonna be doing it at 90 years old yes yes wow. it's unbelievable shout out he's to unbelievable. Hubie, i love the way he breaks things down he's yeah like the yeah. eternal coach absolutely it's great um on, on, from your perspective i mean obviously you're, you're on top of the mma game but but basketball's your your, your love, right? That that was yeah. your goal coming out of school was was to be a broadcaster. Do you see yourself? What what are you some of your goals? You know, next year or or to five? Like, do you see yourself ultimately shifting back in, into hoops? What what do you want to do? So I, I never want to be like a, a singular sports guy, right? Um, and I don't want to also be like um, a master of nothing. So you know, MMA combat will will always be my bread and butter just because I've invested so much time and 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 truly do love it but I love basketball as well and I I love uh reporting on stories and telling stories and the sideline run with ESPN for like a year or so um was a lot of fun um ultimately like it's exciting to be on the sidelines and I enjoy it and I would uh you know I would obviously be open to the idea of doing it again but a one-on-one -on -one interview like this um, especially if it's in person, interests me a lot more because I really think that that's where I can shine. Um, so doing sit downs and doing things of that nature would be uh, would be very good for me. Um, you know, have the podcast. Let's see what happens. Um, you know, this next year is going to be a big year for me because some of my deals are coming up, and so mm -hmm. it's interesting times. And uh, I have one particular thing that has a connection to basketball that's currently mm -hmm. in the oven, not quite ready to be taken out of the oven. But I think it will be a lot of fun, and I and I definitely think we'll uh, connect with uh, basketball fans. So I'm very excited about that as well. That will hopefully come out in the next month and a half or so. Don't mean to be coy, but it's just not quite ready to be there. We uh, go consumed. Who who right now is on your basketball bucket list for interviews wise? So actually, Mike Breen was on the top of the list. There and, you go. Uh, it, a relatively easy one for me, but because uh, I have his actual number and I was able to take, but it. My show was out during the playoffs, and he's very busy, and uh, I didn't want to like bother him too much. So I would love to interview him. My, uh, I would say Marv Albert would be at the very top. Like I got to interview Costas, and that was like a yeah, dream yeah. Yep. interview for me. Um, and so Marv would be incredible. I would love to interview him. I would love to interview Ahmad Rashad. You know, like these were oh, the yeah. guys that I looked yeah, up yeah. to. Uh, the broadcasters. Ein Eagle is another guy. I know I'm, I'm mentioning a lot of uh, broadcasters. And then, of course, you know, to me, like my favorite athlete of all time, Patrick Ewing. Mm. I know he's not the greatest interview ever, but just the idea of speaking to him. And Likewise. actually, um, I got the uh, I got the chance to like shoot around on the MSG floor for the first time. I was doing something with Katie Taylor, the Irish boxer, and uh, I, I I I told her like, oh, my favorite player was Patrick Ewing, and I was uh, emulating you know his baseline J, and somehow. Uh, Patrick Ewing Jr. reposted that on his IG story. And I was like, holy shit, because I was showing him a lot of love. Yeah. Like, wow. And and I kind of like, I, I, I shot my shot. I was like, hey, if the old man is around, you know, I'd love to, to talk to him. And he said he showed it to him and he, he appreciated it, which wow. blew me away that Patrick Ewing even saw something that yeah. was involved. 
but he said not right now so maybe one day i'll get that chance to talk to the captain for sure for sure man and once again we're, we're talking to ariel helwani previewing the knicks training camp kftv training camp week underway cp the franchise here hit that like button hit that share button and subscribe to the channel and ariel on top of well first of all for for the ariel helwani basketball show i love on the social media the homage to nba hoops trading cards Ah, thank you. I Appreciate like that, that. man. Yes. Uh, was that your idea or, or who put uh, that That together? was a little bit of a collaboration. Okay. We were talking about like inspirations as far as 90s basketball yeah. uh, is concerned. So like Skybox and and all that stuff. Um, even the logo is uh, is a shout out to the 1993 NBA All-Star Game. Yep, Jersey. yep absolutely. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's when I became a fan. That's when I fell in love with this, uh, this sport and this league and um that era the 90s basketball will always be the best for me yeah absolutely man i I like that touch very well put together the theme music everything it's a great production thanks man now on on the other side we talk about mma hour i mean it seems like damn near every day you're interviewing five six fighters you just had the the legendary jim lampley on the show how are you preparing for a show like that when you got to interview like five six people uh, I'm a bit of a psycho, uh, if I'm being <laughs> honest. Uh, the truth is, like, there's the preparation comes in the booking. I, I still, mm. uh, dating back to 2009 when we had our first episode, I still book every guest, mm. which is uh, exhausting, as as you well know. You have to make sure that the guys are on time. You know, it's a live show, yeah, yeah. and it's back back. And if someone shows up 20 minutes late, that affects the next guy and all that stuff. Um, so that's like the real stress. And you know, because I live and breathe the sport. Uh, I have to, you know, I have to pretty much be up on everything. So I always say, like, if if someone walked into this room right now, can I be ready to talk to them? I should be ready to talk to them. Mm-hmm. So I have no notes in front of me. I have I have no nothing. It's just like I have a Slack channel where I can talk to the control room, and that's pretty much it. Um, I do have a great team, um, and and one guy in particular, Connor GC, he uh, he lets me know about things that may be on social media, like oh. You know, this guy was shooting a flamethrower. That could be a funny thing to ask. I'll have that video ready if you mm. want to bring that up. Things of that nature. But for the most part, there isn't a ton of prep per se um, when it's an MMA guy. When it's someone who's maybe like a little bit outside of the MMA world because we dabble in boxing and things like that. Uh, you know, maybe I'll like read up a little bit. But, you know, to me, like the key is just good conversation, listening, obviously having some knowledge of who these people are, being confident in the knowledge, and then just letting it flow. Um and, and like the Lampley interview last week was, again, like I talk about all these broadcasters looking up to these guys. That was like a dream for me. And mm-hmm. afterwards, uh, someone who worked with him sent me a really nice note how much he enjoyed. And I was like, I can't even believe, like if you would have told 1994 me that all this would be even possible, he wouldn't have believed it. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, I always say, I hope I don't wake up. I hope that this doesn't end because it's a pretty damn good life. Uh, the incredible journey so far, man. And w- when you're looking at the, the landscape right now, I mean, you know, so many content creators are, are out there uh, just cr- creating their own path. Uh, one in particular that that's been underway so far is you kind of have that hybrid mix with Pat McAfee and ESPN. Yeah. What do you what do you think about that model? And is that something that you might be interested in uh, down down the road? Well, uh, first of all, Pat McAfee is an absolute inspiration. He mm. is, uh, he's incredible. He's like a tour de force. What he has been able to build and and sustain and now grow, like his numbers are nuts. Like on a bad day, he's getting 60K concurrence on YouTube. That's just yeah, absurd. Yeah, like yeah. he is the king. And uh, we all aspire to be that successful or even like a 10th as successful as him. Um, what's most amazing about his current situation is he did this deal with ESPN and he owns everything. He's just licensing this to ESPN. You know, he gets to keep his guys, his set, his crew, his graphics, his content. Like, yeah. that's that's his the dream sponsors, for everyone. He's got the SeatGeek uh, ticker still yes. going. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's an unbelievable deal. Plus, he gets to be on game day. Plus, he gets to do these, you know, watch along things. He's got a great thing. And so, yeah, to a degree, um, being you know, fully independent, truly independent and, and, and owning all your stuff. And then like working with other partners, that's, that's probably the dream. Um, and that's the way I think media is evolving. Uh, you are doing that and, and, it, and it's a great thing that you're doing for, um, you know, for the fan base, but just like you and, and I think like Pat and 
like I think it's nice to have your thing that you mm -hmm. own, mm -hmm. and then it's nice to have these other things. So you'll you'll appear on WFN just like I'll appear on DAZN, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's nice to have your home, and then it's nice to have like the landscaping yeah. and the fun little like side gigs where you do special events or special opportunities. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. I, you know, getting to do real sports has been amazing. Unfortunately, that's coming to an end. But, I, but speaking of basketball, I have a great basketball profile coming out uh, next month on real mm. sports, which I can't wait to air. Uh, it's a basketball story. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and getting to do more of that stuff has really been tremendous since leaving ESPN now a little over two years. I couldn't have planned it better than it has, uh, yeah. you know, has gone down. Absolutely. Tremendous journey for you. And yeah, I, I enjoy it, man. Just as you said, having your own lane, but then being able to kind of spread the tentacles out and, and touch different parts of the industry. And for me, uh, coming out of here from scratch, it's been a tremendous learning experience, you know, whether it's uh, being in studio at SNY or, or at WFVN, yeah. as you said, or learning from guys like, you know, working with a guy like a Sam Mitchell, a former Raptors coach, as you know, with with, uh, with NBA radio. It, it's a uh, it's a very interesting learning experience for sure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I love when I hear you on NBA radio. I hear that voice. I'm like, I know that guy. That's yeah. great. It's cool to see you like in the fan mode. Yeah. And I mean like this mode. But then it's cool to see you like talking mainstream and uh, like, you know, kind of the 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 full spectrum of NBA storylines and whatnot. So, yeah, keep it up, man. You're doing great, great stuff. And uh, you're so well spoken and well versed and well researched and not just Knicks basketball. That's that's like I, I'm sure you could do that in your sleep, but everything else going on. Very Appreciate impressive. It. Appreciate it, man. Uh, real quick on the ufc front i gotta ask you about my guy john jones you got ufc oh, 295 yeah. at the garden november 11th john jones versus stipe what are you thinking about in, in regards to that fight yes that's a massive fight november 11th madison square garden heavyweight title fight uh john looked fantastic against surreal gone i think yeah. stipe is going to be a tougher opponent obviously but i think john jones should win this fight um you know stipe is only really coming back for this fight uh, he had never retired but, you know, he had not fought in a couple of years and it seemed like there was just nothing out there that was truly motivating him. And so the fact that he's coming back for this one, you wonder where he's at, what kind of shape he's been in. Um, has he been training boxing? Has he been training wrestling? Has he been training, you know, everything involved in MMA? Uh, he's a full time firefighter now. And that's a really tough job. So obviously he's in shape, but is he in fighting shape? You yeah. know what I mean? Is he is he is he up on everything now with John? There's always some questions about what he's doing outside of the right. gym and right. whatnot. He seems to be in a good spot. Uh, it's very unfortunate what's been happening with his brother, Chandler yeah, Jones, yeah. and I wish him the best. Um, but John seems to have found uh, a nice lane for himself at heavyweight. Here is what I feel is going to happen because a lot of people think this could be a retirement fight for both guys. Mm. I think Stipe is retiring win or lose, and I think John... If he loses, maybe retire. But if he wins, he's he's not retiring. There's mm. too much money to be made. He has talked about not being motivated by any of the other heavyweights out there. But there are some young guys coming up who I think would give him an interesting fight. But there's still the prospect of like the Nganu fight out there yeah. potentially. I know Tyson Fury has been talking about. It. There's too much money for John Jones, and I think John and his people recognize that John doing nothing is ultimately not good for John. As long as he's yeah. undefeated and as long as he's fighting as well as he fought back in March, it's better for him to be a fighter. So I'm looking forward to it. John Jones fighting in New York finally from Endicott, New York, finally getting a chance to fight at uh, MSG is a pretty damn cool scene. And the uh, the co-main event that night is also a great fight. Yuri Prochaska against Alex Pereira. Mm. Pereira, the guy who knocked out Israel Desanya yeah. at yeah. MSG last November. That's for the vacant light heavyweight title. That should be really fun as well. So the tickets are insanely, insanely expensive. Insanely priced, yes. man. Dolan, yeah. holy, you got to pay for this fear, man. He, he's yes. putting a New York tax to cover the uh, the Technodrome yeah. that he's got over there in Las Vegas, it's man. It's insanely so, expensive. Good yeah. luck to anyone getting tickets. Uh, but, you know, it's a great card if you're watching yeah. from home. Absolutely. Uh, listen, man, Jones, Jones has been my favorite fighter. He, he's the one that got me into the sport on a, on a full-time basis. And I'm just not sure if there's anyone in sports like him who can spend so much time away from the sport, whether it's vices yeah. or distractions, whatever, and then come right back to being on top. It, it, no, it's, it's insane, amazing. man. And, I, and I've compared him to the likes of Dwight Gooden, um, or uh, Daryl Strawberry, yeah, right? Like yeah. guys who just kind of couldn't get out of their own way. And, 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 you know, the better comparison is maybe a guy like Lawrence Taylor, mm. who actually like was winning championships and, and doing some crazy stuff. You just hope that it would never come truly crashing down on him to where like he would go on like a four or five 
fight losing streak. It hasn't happened yet. Still undefeated. Yeah. Now a two division champion. You know, hard to argue against him being the greatest of all time. I always say that there's two mm -hmm. lists for me in terms of greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. There's greatest of all time if you've never tested positive for any PED, and then there's you know the greatest of all time list, and everything is included. For the, for the if it's the if it's the latter, it's John Jones. Unfortunately, he does have a, a history with that stuff. Whether yeah. it was you know right, wrong, who who knows um whether he knowingly took what you know it's impossible to know and then if that's the list then it's george st pierre for me because he never yeah. tested positive but if it's everything's allowed it's got to be john jones two division champion undefeated i mean no one comes close true indeed true indeed man final question for you and this has been a great great conversation always appreciate the time final win prediction playoff prediction what say you for these new york knicks all right so i think that we end up Fifth seed. Mm. I'm going to say 48 wins. Okay. 48 wins, Eastern Conference Finals. Bit of a step further from last year. Let's go. Let's go. There it is, Have man. Have you given yours yet? I haven't yet. I was I was going to kind of okay. wait. I got to let me see okay. how the preseason plans right. out. I'm going to wait a little bit, but I'm in the ballpark. I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. I'll, You're I'll in the ballpark? That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Am I above you? Okay. You don't want to say. You don't I don't want to say just yet. Okay. But, but yeah. But, I, I will, but I'm not I, totally, you don't, you don't totally disagree. No, 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 no. Okay. I, don't, I don't think you're that far off. I'm, I'm around right. that range, you know. By the for, way, do you know what the over under is? I believe like what the it's line is? 46 and a half. 46 and a half. All right. I take the over. That, that's what I saw. Um, that's what I saw earlier in the off season. I'll I'm, take I'll uh, take the yeah, over. I believe it's forty six okay, so and a half. So I'm around that ball. I, I, by the way, I don't th I don't think fifty is out of the question. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think 50 so. is out of the question. I don't think so. But like I said, they they gotta get off to a good start and uh, and not get mired in any type of ruts or rust. They've got to really come out guns blazing. But I, I think fifty is attainable if they come out and handle business. Yeah, yeah. I'm really curious to see how this season goes. Uh, it's wide open in the East and the West, I think, which is super fun. Yeah. Uh, Nuggets defending champs. Suns, you think, are better. Uh, like I said, Bucks are better. Boston, I think, is a little bit better. Miami's a little bit worse. Uh, you know, are some of those other teams going to take a step forward? Uh, is there going to be another Sacramento Kings? What are the Sacramento Kings in year two here? Golden State, you know, do they still have a little juice left? Like, it's, it's, a, it's a fun season coming yeah. up. I'm excited about it. Going to be a lot of fun, man, and hopefully we can catch up midseason or knock on one playoffs. But, Ariel, thanks again for the time, man. We, we look forward to more of your content, and, and uh, we'll be looking out for it, man. Uh, shout out to you. Much love, and much love to all the Knicks fans out there. Can't wait until we finally get to celebrate one together. Down Broadway. Let's finally. Just want one, yeah. CP. Just want one, and then we can all die in peace. Absolutely, Take care, man. Take care.